The renders you're seeing right now on the screen are Gaussian splatting. This process has become much easier than before and now you can generate Gaussian splats for free using your own videos with no paid subscription. It's completely free and open source. If you've been following my recent videos, you know I'm exploring different ways to capture and construct Gaussian splattings. The workflow I'm about to share is an open source and it simplifies the steps that are usually required to create a Gaussian splat. We no longer need to break videos into image sequences the camera alignment will be done for us and the waiting time will be significantly cut all this is handled for us using the cold map workflow and we'll be rendering the Gaussian splats directly into blender you can follow along with your own video files this process is identical now get yourself ready and let's go in order to follow along you need to build a folder structure that will do all the heavy lifting for us I prepared a list of links you need to download into your machine. You can find them into the video description. First, you need to download ColdMap into your machine. This is a free open source application. Head over to the website and choose between the two download options. If you have an NVIDIA graphics card, pick the first option. If not, go for the second one. Download the file into your machine and keep it unzipped for now. Next, we need to download FFmpeg into our machine. We need this step because most photogrammetry applications don't support directly video input and ColdMap is one of them. So click on Windows, choose the Windows builds from Gian, scroll down and pick the release essential version. Download this in the same folder as previous file. For the third step, we need to download the Polyfior script. This is gonna connect all the tools into an automatic workflow. Click on the raw option, a new page will open, then press Ctrl S to save it into your machine. When you save the file, make sure it keeps the path extension and removes any text format that might be added. And finally, to bring the results into a 3D software, we'll use a Blender add-on that allows Blender to read the tracking data. Download this as well and keep it in the same location. In the folder where you download all these files, we're gonna create a folder called Tracking. Inside that folder, create five subfolders. You can make one folder and simply copy paste it until you have five folders. Now rename each one of them to match the structure shown on screen. Well done, half of the work is already completed. The only thing we have to do is to populate this folder. So stay with me, this part is very easy. Go back one level and copy everything except the Blender add-on. Paste those files into the tracking folder so we can start organizing them. The bat file goes into the script folder and zip the call map file. Everything from the extracted folder needs to be moved out. So cut everything in the folder, then paste everything in the folder called call map. Do the same process with FFmpeg. And once you've moved all the files, you can delete the leftover folders. Now it's time for us to pick one video that you want to use for this exercise. In my case, I'll be using the footage of myself. It's a 360 video that has 13 seconds long and I think will work just great. The only thing you need right now is to take the video file and drag it into the video folder and then go up one level and inside the script folder we are going to run the bat file. Once you click on the bat file a terminal window will appear and what this does is breaks down the video into image sequences at the first step. Next is gonna align the 3D camera in a 3D space using photogrammetry and after that it outputs a 3D camera track that represents the original camera path. It's wild how powerful this tool is. If you want to see how everything works under the hood, you can open the scene folder where you will find the photogrammetry data along with the image sequence. This part will be really important in the next stage. Open up Blender and delete the default scene. Now we are going to import the results we generated earlier in Blender using the photogrammetry importer add-on. To do this, we first need to install the plugin. One easy way to install the add-on in Blender is by dragging the zip file directly into the viewport. If you want to check that it has been imported correctly, go to Edit Preferences Add-on and in the search bar type photogrammetry. It should appear in the list. Another way to install it is to click on the small drop down menu here and locate the zip file manually. The next step is to import all our data in Blender using this add-on. To do that, go to File, Import and you should see a new option called Cold Map Model Workspace. Click on it and navigate to the folder structure we built earlier. Go into the scene folder which will have the same name as your video input file. Open that folder, enable suppress distortion warning and then import the cold map data. Before we move 
move on i just want to say thank you for watching i really want to hit 5,000 subscribers by the end of this year i know it's quite impossible that that's my dream and if you enjoy this type of content don't forget to subscribe thank you so much and now back to the video if the data is visible in your scene congrats you've just imported your photogrammetry and it's now visible as a point cloud alongside with your 3d camera path the first thing i do once the file loads is orient the photogrammetry scene to do that go to the outliner and collapse the entire camera folder click on the point cloud in the outliner then in the viewport press a to select everything with your scene selected press Press Ctrl P and choose object. What this does, it groups the entire scene so you can position it in 3D space without breaking the camera path. Take your time until you position this correctly. If you want to see through the camera, select the camera in the outliner and then press 0 on your numpad. If you disable the camera path in the outliner and press play, you will see the camera moves identical to the camera from the original video. This is also known as a camera track and that's why this workflow is so powerful. To train our Gaussian splats for free, we are going to use Brush. Check the description if you want to access the link. Once you're there, click on the releases, scroll down and pick the window file. Download this file into the same folder structure. I'm going to create a separate folder and call this Brush. Navigate into that folder and unzip the file. Double click on the file and Brush will open. Click more info and then run anyway. Anyway, what it can happen. In Brush, go to Directory and navigate to the Scene folder. Inside, you will see the Image and Sparse folder. This allows Brush to read the photogrammetry and camera alignment and the connected images. Select the entire folder and now a window will appear where you can control the Gaussian Splat settings. For now, we're gonna leave everything at the default values. Then go to the bottom and press Start. As soon as you hit Start, you will see the training process begins and the Gaussian Splat starting to generate, which is quite cool. This Will take some time depending how many images you have and the resolutions of your file. You can check the training process for each image by using this slider. At the bottom you will see the full image sequence that has been imported and on the top you can see the training process. You can also navigate into the view using your mouse and WSD keys. Once the training process is complete you can go up here and export the model as a PLY file. Save the file in the same folder structure. Now if you want to import the results into Blender the best plugin I've discovered so far is the 3D GS Blender add-on. You'll find the link in the description. To download it, go to the release tab and choose version 4, which is the version I'm using to create this tutorial. Click on the arrow next to the assets and download the plugin. We'll install this add-on in Blender the same way as the previous one, by dragging and dropping the zip file into the viewport. In Blender, on the right hand side, click on 3DGS Render and this window will pop up. Here we are going to click on Import PLY, navigate to the folder where you exported the PLY from Brush and load it. When you import it, you will see a bunch of points loading into the scene. These are our Gaussian splats generated from Brush. The orientation will be off, but don't worry, we are going to fix that now and it's very easy. With the Gaussian Splat selected, Ctrl click the point cloud, then press Ctrl P and choose object without inverse. This will snap the Gaussian Splats into the same position as the point cloud. How cool is that? From here, select your camera in the viewport, press 0 and disable the image plane in the background. Now, press render in the Kiri plugin. That's it. You can see the Gaussian Splat being rendered in the Blender viewport. You can now add any objects into your scene, for example, if I add a cube and place it into the scene, you'll see that it interacts with the Gaussian Splatting, which is amazing. Exporting these images is very easy. Make sure that in your output settings you have PNG selected. For this test, I'm going to leave all the other settings as they are. Now in the Kiri add-on, go to Render and here you'll have a few options to choose from. I'll enable Render Animation and Color Path. Sometimes when you import the camera, the frame range can be wrong, so make sure to adjust it here. And now you can hit render. You won't see anything happening visually in Blender, but don't worry, your images are being generated in the background. To check them, go to your export folder. 
Now, if you want to import these images into Premiere Pro as an image sequence, it won't work at first, and that's because the images are named incorrectly. The file name includes the frame number followed by dash color, and this format won't be recognized properly. To fix this, it's very easy. You'll need a renaming tool. In my case, I'm going to use Bulk Rename. Open the software and drag all your images into it and make sure they are selected. And then go to Replace section and type the part of the name you want to change. In my case, I want to remove dash color, so I'll type that. On the right side, you'll see the new file name being generated. Now click Rename and this will rename all your images. Now you will be able to import this image sequence in any editing software. And that's it for today. Thank you for watching and if you enjoyed this type of content, you already know what to do. Subscribe, subscribe. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one.